Good morning and welcome to the prayer port. It's good to have you out here today. This is just ironic because this is now my second attempt at my second attempt of my eighth attempt to get this particular prayer porch out. This is the prayer porch that I keep starting and then the phone acts up. So I know it's something that needs to be there because yesterday I was listening to a podcast from Rabbi uh, Landry's daughter, Megan, and she was saying that she had a similar thing happen. She wanted to do, a, there was a podcast God put on her heart about pushing through and pushing through and enduring and facing the enemy because the breakthrough was about to happen. And every time she did, she had technological issues beyond her control, beyond her management. So she went to her dad and said, should I just not do it? And he's like, no, I think if the God put it on your heart, you need to do it. And that's how I feel about this. God has put this so strong on my heart that for now, this is going on three weeks, four weeks of just, I want to get this out. And every time I try to do this message, my phone shorts out, there's something that happens and I am so frustrated with it. So at this point, I am going to be a little bit late for work and I, but I got to get this out. I got to get this out. I messed with my phone. I hope this endures. So here we go. If we don't, I'm going to give it to you in pieces. So be ready to get the pieces that I have. And I may go back and put the pieces in that I started before because they were so rich and um, let you piece it together. But I want you to grab your scripture real quick. Let's head to Matthew. This verse of this story is actually told in three different places. And in all three places, I was convicted with the exact same thing because I realized that it's one of those where they, they the same wording, everything is there and it's just so good. But I want you to look at Matthew chapter 19. And there's an awesome verse that we love to pull on, but I want to put that verse into its context because once you put it in context, you're going to pull on it even more, but you're going to say, whoa, I did not realize all that that entailed. That is phenomenal. So I want you to look at um, Matthew chapter 19, and I want you to look at verse 26. 1926 of Matthew says, Jesus looked at them intently. He looked at them intently and he said this, humanly speaking, it is impossible, but God, but with God, everything, everything is possible. So what's Jesus talking here? What is it that they thought was not going to be possible? What is it that they thought was impossible? Well, if you read before that, the thing that they think is impossible kind of scares them. You can tell they're a little bit like, whoa, Jesus, that was heavy. Because Jesus tells another person that he, he's, he has this conversation with another person. And when he leaves, Jesus actually says, do you know what? It is going to be very difficult for this type of person to get into the kingdom of heaven. As a matter of fact, it says, and go just two verses up, and Jesus tells his disciples, if I tell you the truth, it is very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. So I'll say it again. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. So the disciples say, who, then, then disciples, it says they're astonished. Jesus, you're saying they, that if you have money, you're not getting into heaven. Then who in the world can be saved? Notice what they realized. They said, who in the world can be saved? Jesus didn't say nobody. He said that it's very difficult for a wealthy person to get into the kingdom of God. And they said, well, then who can be saved? And Jesus looks at them intently and says, humanly speaking, it's impossible. It is impossible as a human to find salvation. It is impossible as a human to find salvation, but through God, everything is possible. Now we pull this out of context and we say, see, see, this is, this is prosperity. Gospel is not, you can't, God does not allow for wealth. God does not, that is not true. You've got to really, really take this in the bigger picture. You really, and this is, I mean, this is definitely like four or five prayer porches long. But I want you to look here because I want you to keep reading after. That was what was before. Let's look at what's after. So Peter gets a little lippy here. He says, um, well, whoa, 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 wait. We've given up everything to follow you. So what will we get? 
Now look, he is suddenly, he's not saying, what are the people we talk to get? What's in this for us? Are we not going to make it? I think Peter realizes, I'm not poor. I'm not poor. Am I going to make it? My, I, I, I am not begging bread. So am I going to make it? And Jesus says, I assure you, when the world is made new and the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you have been my followers. You who have been my followers will also sit on 12 thrones, judging 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has given up houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or property for my name's sake will receive a hundred times as much in return and will inherit eternal life. That many who are the greatest now will be the least then and those who are seen those seem least important will be the richest then now jesus is starting to say what you see as rich isn't what i see as rich you're trying to see this through human eyes the reality is humanly speaking jesus told them it's impossible for any of us to earn our way to heaven nobody has the golden ticket Nobody is good enough to get in. Nobody is talented enough. No one is smart enough. No one is so intuitive into the word. They, I memorized the whole Bible. That's still not going to get you in. That's not going to be your ticket. That's not a golden ticket. But it's those who have given things up. Right before this verse, in every single one of the Gospels that tells the story, is the story that we did earlier on the prayer porch, where Jesus says, let those little kids come to me. Because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. They're totally dependent. They're totally dependent on God and what God has for them. So when he was saying this to the rich young man, the young man basically came to him saying, is my behavior good enough? I've kept all the commandments. I'm a good guy. God says, you are a good guy. And that's great, but goodness isn't going to get you in there. No. I want you to become totally dependent on me. That's what he was telling them. I want you to realize that all that you have is not yours. It's actually God's. So if God says to you, give this away right now, then you know he's got something different and better in store for you. That's what Jesus was telling this rich man. He's saying, I want you to trust me enough that you know that what I have in store for you is better than the plans that you have for yourself. Ask me about your plans. I'm the one that gave you those gifts and talents. And I gave them to you for a reason to glorify the kingdom. So when you turn your perspective around and you realize that what you have is his and what you have is to glorify him and what you have is to fulfill your purpose that you were born into, then you'll understand what it's like to be a child of God. We're a child of God. We're not a spouse. We're not a, we are a child of his. We're Jesus' bride, but we're a child of God. God is our provider. God is our provider. And all that we have is his. When my husband and I, when he proposed to me, and uh, his, the day after our proposal, I said to him, I forgot to ask you something, and I need to know this before we tell everybody that we're engaged to be married. And to this day, he tells the story, and he says, I remember exactly where we were on the road when she said this. Because I said to him, I said, I need to know how you feel about tithes and offerings. And he said, what do you mean with tithes and offerings? And I said, I need to know. And he said, I put money in the offering plate. I'm okay with that. We can put money in the offering. I said, no, I'm not talking about money in the offering plate. I said, I'm talking like if God asks us to give up our house, give up our car, give up our lives and move somewhere, are you ready for that? Are you ready to realize that all that we have is God's? And he, he back up a little bit before I had answered that, the, that was the answer to his question where he said, do you want me to tithe on gross or, because I said at least, the tithe is the minimum. And he said, so is that on gross or net? And I said, it's on everything. It's on everything that we have, Brian. And he stopped and thought about that. He said, I need to think about that. 
I really need to think on that. Because I don't know if I'm ready for that. He was in the same position this rich young ruler was at that point. He said, I'm not sure if I, I'll give, I'll give to the church. I'll give to this, but I'm not ready to say everything that I have is his. I worked for this. I said, no, he gave that to you. And it wasn't until later that day, and I could tell he was really contemplating this, that he came back and he said, I want to learn to do that. That's who I want to be. And now God has blessed us exactly as the scripture says, 10 times more because we realize that everything that we have isn't ours. It's not ours, it's his. This, this prayer porch belongs to him. It's his. That's why when Jesus says in the Beatitudes, going back to another prayer porch, he says, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Blessed are those who realize that I have to empty myself out so that God can fill us up. So, yes, Jesus is right. Humanly possible salvation in the kingdom of God is impossible for us. That when we totally empty ourselves to him and we say, Jesus, I am totally yours. That is when we are a cow going through the eye of a needle, a camel going through the eye of a needle, which by the way, is not a needle that we think of. That is, in, if you, they, at the gates of Israel, there's a small entryway that people walk through. And when the camel has to go through it, it's painstaking for them. They have their load on their back, they have to get down on their knees and they have to crawl. They have to get down on their knees with all that they have, the treasures that they're carrying, and they have to crawl to the feet of the Father. When we get down on our knees and surrender all that we have, then we truly understand what our calling is. Incredible verse. I want to go and elaborate on that a little bit more, but I'm going to let you digest that a little bit. I'm not going to let the enemy keep this from coming out because it's good. It's good. So, Remember today, as we surrender ourselves and we think, I don't know if I want to let go, I just let go. You're going to be amazed at what's possible in the hands of the Father. It's so much more than what you think you have in your human hands. Let go and let God. Because with God, all things are possible. Have a great day. It's wonderful to be here with you on the porch.